and you know you shouldn't waste too, too much time on this because we are actually starting on thermodynamics this week so Wednesday is I think as long as you should work on it but if you really want extra time you can have until Saturday and then um, that'll be it I'll have to cut everyone off so that I can actually make this count as extra credit so with that uh, let me show you the questions that I pulled out uh, I'm gonna have to kind of pick and choose what we cover. Um, so I picked one, two, three, four, five questions. Um, and uh, I think I will definitely cover this question, if only because um, some of the things that I need to do to work out the answers here kind of relate to um, what you have to know for heat engines in this class. Uh, that's coming up in like one to two weeks. So I uh, want to work through this question, so I'll do that. I uh, probably have enough time to do at least one additional question. Um, and, <laughs> oh wow. I, I, so I'll do one of these, any requests? If there is a request, please put it in in the next minute or so. If there isn't, I'm going to have to kind of think through and which question I want to do. I, I think I keep misreading this question. Oh, sorry. Um, when I was teaching physics, I misread this question to think of it so like a conical pendulum thing. And then reading it carefully, I realized it's vertical circle. So, okay. So I don't think, unless there's a request, I don't think I'm going to do this question because um, it's not the question that I thought it was. Um, so let me do, uh, let, me, let me do the first question because it's kind of a, generic uh, problem solving question. It's, uh, it's a bit independent of what specific topics we are covering in this class. Because one of the skills that we hope uh, student, you develop as you go through a physics class is a quantitative problem solving skill. And a good aspect of kinematics kind of works out that way because it's um, the skill you're developing is about uh, reading uh, English description of a setup and um, kind of understanding enough of the setup to develop mathematical description of that setup and then use that mathematical description to work out any quantities that you need to work out. So, so let me demonstrate that with this. Um, unless there are other requests. Didn't see any other requests. Okay, so let me do this. So it says uh, marble rolls of a tabletop, um, rolls of a tabletop 1.25 meter high. I like to uh, uh, draw kind of uh, figures as I try to figure out what information the question is giving me. So that's what I'm drawing. Uh, marble is rolling off a tabletop of a certain height. Uh, and it hits, uh, and I guess it's gonna kind of go through like a projectile motion thing. And it'll hit the floor at a point 3.9 meters away or distance D away from the table's edge in a horizontal direction. All right. Um, so it asks how long is the marble in the air? And um, I hope in physics 4a you learned kinematics equations especially the uh, kinematics equations for motion under constant acceleration and you remember expressions like this the height of an object falling under gravitational acceleration is minus one half gt squared plus initial y velocity t plus um, initial y position and it's the, um, there's a, a lot of synthesis to be done where you have to bring in the things that you know, um, kind of understand at an intuitive level that it somehow relates to questions like this. Um, you kind of, it's, you know, the, the 
like in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's a, uh, you know, what's the answer, the ultimate answer, and the harder part is coming up with the ultimate question. <laughs> and, um, and that's a, really the harder part in physics, uh, coming up with the equations that you have to solve in order to actually go through the math. And uh, that's the skill that uh, we hope that you developed as you worked through Physics 4A. And that's the skill that we hope that you continue to develop as you work through Physics 4B. So, um, so I know from having gone through Physics 4A that this equation is somehow relevant. And having written it down, I know it simplifies because um, the initial y velocity is zero. It's only moving horizontally. This is just the x component. And um, for the how low marble is in the air, so I'm looking at the point when the marble has uh, marble hit the ground. So say that this is t equals zero, and I'm looking at when it hit the ground. So um, at that time, t final, I know the y position of the marble should be zero. It should be on the ground. And my initial y position is h. So that gives me the equation to solve for. Let me write down the simplified version here. Zero is equal to minus one half gt final squared plus h. So the rest is algebra. And it's this algebra is uh, not complicated. It, the complicated and difficult part is actually coming up with the equations themselves. Because in many of the physics questions, you're not told what equations to use. Um, you are expected to know <laughs> what they are from your understanding of physics. So let me solve this for t final. Um, I'm just going to do that in my head in the interest of time. You do that, you get um, 2 h over g square rooted. And I'm just going to check the unit. This should have been the unit of seconds. And this should have been the unit of meters. Meters per second squared. Meters cancel out. This goes to the numerator square root. Okay. So the units work out, so I probably did it correctly. So um, yeah, So and you plug in the numbers, and um, that will give you the answer there. Let me keep working through. Um, so it asks, so what is the speed of the marble when it leaves the table's edge? So I labeled it here, but I guess reading the question more carefully, I realized, oh, I was never told what this is. So that's a label of an unknown. So I need some additional information to figure this out. And um, this is where, you know, you go through the equations that you know, and one of the equations that hopefully you, you will hit upon as being relevant to this question is one that relates the displacement with um, speed and time, which is that uh, displacement is given by average speed times the duration of um, the movement. Here, if you go back to the projectile motion, the x component of velocity is going to be constant. So what I label this the average velocity really is just the, the initial x velocity. And oh, and I worked out the time here. This uh, duration of time is this t final that we worked out earlier. And the delta x, we are the displacement in the horizontal direction. We are given that here, so t. So let me solve that for um, v. That should give me the um, what they are looking for here. So this was a for part b. All I need to do is to solve that for speed. Um, initial x velocity is the displacement d divided by the time, or let me just write that out, square root of 2h over g. And um, I guess I just had to plug in the numbers. Um, all the numbers are given. Um, and what is its speed when it hits the floor? Um, that's where you kind of have to recall um, uh, vector quality of movement. So you have um, 
So when it left the uh, table's edge, this was the entire velocity. It only had the horizontal component. When it's hitting the ground, oops. When it's hitting the ground here, sorry, I keep, one. Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, all right, when it's hitting the ground there, it has, um, you know, it's moving in a kind of diagonal direction and uh, diagonal direction. <laughs> um, so it has X component, which it will be the same X component that you had before, V naught X. And it'll have downward direction, which is a V naught Y final that you kind of have to work out. And once you work this out, then the final speed will be given by the Pythagorean theorem, square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So I need to work this out. And for that, I recall one of the kinematics equations, which is that um, the V final is equal to V initial plus uh, acceleration times time. In this particular case, in the y direction, acceleration is minus g, so this will be v naught minus g t final. The v naught was zero, so go to zero. So I have t final from part a. Many physics questions are kind of cumulative. <laughs> That's why it's good to organize your work because you might need it. Um, so yeah, so I plug this in, then I get for that uh, V naught Y final is equal to um, minus G times that quantity there. And doing the simplification in my head, it's two H square root of two H G. And at this point, I'll probably just plug in the numbers and use those numbers to calculate um, these to get the speed for parsing. So yeah, that's uh, the um, kinematics question. And the intent of this uh, uh, mechanics review problem set is that, um, you know, this uh, kind of have you recalling a lot of things that you learned in physics 4A and it's been a while that you might have forgotten. And the intent here is that it's a space for you to kind of review for yourself. Um, there isn't a great stress to get everything. Um, it's all extra credit, I do, I hope you'll get 100%, but if you don't, no big deal. Um, i kind of more anxious to start out with the physics for material, but I want you to provide this space for you to do uh, this review on your own. Now, I said I would do this uh, very last question, but I think I'm out of time. <laughs> uh, I might do this in a different um, virtual class session or, hey, well, I'll just tell you why I want you to do this. So I don't have to work out um, any of these answers because, um, I mean, so, you know, to actually figure out the answer here, you need the Bernoulli's principle, which it says um, rho g h plus one half rho v squared plus um, pressure at the um, pr pressure that adds up to zero. This is a uh, Bernoulli's principle. Um, in my physics uh, for a class, we actually don't cover Bernoulli's principle because we do fluids at the end and we kind of run out of time. <laughs> then I don't care. We are not going to be using Bernoulli's principle in physics for me. What I um, did care and uh, had the interest in here in covering is the connection between force and pressure, because that's something that's gonna be relevant as we talk about heat engine and um, thermodynamic processes that gases go through. So here you have this object that's gonna be applying force on this fluid. Um, you know, if I draw a free body diagram for the mass, um, there's a gravity pulling it down and there's an upward support force coming from the fluid. And uh, there's a reaction force on the fluid. That's what's uh, pressing the fluid down. And there's a pressure on the fluid due to that uh, weight of this additional material. And um, really what I wanted to say was that pressure due to that force 
is given by the force mg, you know, the magnitude of these two ends up being the same. So the magnitude works out to be mg. Um, the pressure is mg divided by the area. Uh, and this kind of connection between pressure and force, it, it, in, you know, if it, that's an important intuition to keep in mind as we work through thermodynamics. So, so yeah, I guess I covered what I needed to cover. So uh, this problem said it's due on Wednesday, uh, and we uh, so as you can kind of see in the modules, there's a lot we cover in week one. <laughs> so after the mechanics review, there's we're covering chapters one and two, and the conceptual questions they are due this Friday. The problem set two, they are due on Monday. So, um, so yeah, um, don't waste too much time on this uh, first set. Uh, to put in some time, give you yourself some time to refresh what you uh, learned in Physics 4A. But uh, what's uh, more important this week is, you know, what we are covering this semester. So, um, so you know, put in some effort, but I guess not too much effort. 